tech names grabbing our attention this morning. Morgan Stanley shifting their top pick from AMD to NVIDIA, noting that NVIDIA is likely to be to uh, be the only company to beat and raise in 2023 due to AI. But they are bullish on the AI space beyond this year, raising price targets for both names along with Marvell and Intel. The analyst behind that call joins us now, Morgan Stanley's Joseph Moore. Joseph, great to have you with us. Um, great, so thank you. NVIDIA is your top pick, and it happens to coincide on a day when NVIDIA makes a fresh record high. <laughs> you see $500 for the price target. Um, what would you say to those who question the valuation? They don't question whether or not uh, NVIDIA deserves to have a premium multiple. They don't question that AI, uh, NVIDIA is currently winning the AI race. They just simply question how much of a premium it should trade at. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's it's been an amazing move. Uh, I think I've covered the stock since the IPO and seeing it at a trillion dollars valuation, uh, it takes some getting used to. But we're also seeing the strength of business that's unprecedented, both what we saw in the last quarter, uh, what we've seen since then. We continue to, to hear about new big orders from customers that weren't on the customer list three months ago, uh, from governments, from uh, you know, enterprise spending, which are smaller increments than what we see in cloud, still pretty significant. We're just seeing real strength in the business. And so I think these numbers can keep going up. Uh, and what's really remarkable about this is it's happening in a constrained budgetary environment. So cloud CapEx budgets aren't really going up. We're just seeing a pivot uh, away from traditional legacy spending towards AI. And that's why we make the comment that, you know, there's one company where numbers are going up because everybody else uh, you know, even though they're all nicely levered to AI, they still have exposure to uh, the traditional server business, which has some downsides. So, you know, a lot of strength in the business. Uh, I agree it's a premium valuation, always has been, but it's really a unique situation that in 30 years, you know, I've not seen uh, something pivot in this direction with such speed. I mean, six, four, four months ago, you had the company was kind of another company that was dealing with sort of budgetary pressures and things like that. Suddenly now they're seeing this kind of surge. It's, it's pretty spectacular. Yeah, well, I note in your note, you say that our industry contacts are reporting daily new orders from customers that were not contemplated as major customers until now. Can you give us some sense as to what you're talking about there? Sure. I mean, you know, when we first upgraded the stock in March, we sort of had a reference point of, you know, growing this data center business to $40 billion in three years. We were thinking that would mostly come from cloud customers, traditional big scale cloud customers. And the growth would come not from more people investing in these models, but from growth in complexity in the models, uh, from, from more vertically attenuated models, uh, from translation of those models into other languages, things like that. What we're seeing instead is a significant breadth where we're seeing, uh, you know, companies that are in the applications development world that we would have thought would be developing these models in cloud or, or using models that were developed in cloud, instead developing their own models. Uh, you know, we are seeing governments sort of have significant new activity here. So I think there's just a number of places where we're seeing the number of models for something that's very capital intensive like this, that's really broadening out quickly. And that's why, you know, the business was as strong as it was, at, you know, when they guided July and everything we hear is that, you know, it continues to get stronger.